walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big Earlier this year, I began my examination of the women who not only top line shows during the golden age of radio, but they filled important roles behind the microphone as well. While so many of the prominent men from this era managed to move to television and largely cemented their legacies as legends, it's often a bit harder to find information on the women of radio. However, as we showed in our examination of Mary Livingston, they were just as important and influential to not only radio, but how the medium shaped the eventual growth of television. This week, I'm turning my eye to a woman whose career began on radio before moving to television in its earliest forms. Gertrude Berg is a name which isn't necessarily known today by those outside of film and television history circles. But in the first half of the 20th century, this writer, producer, actress, and creator was a legend and a household name to American audiences. Gertrude Berg is a name I only learned about in my film school days. It's a depressing thought considering I'm a classic TV watcher from my earliest years with far too many hours spent in front of the golden age of Nick at Night in the 1990s. When her television show The Goldbergs came to television in 1949, I Love Lucy was still two years off while other classics which we reflect on fondly like The Dick Van Dyke Show and The Andy Griffith Show were still more than a decade in the future. This was the Wild West of television, and the Goldbergs hold the distinction of being, at the very least, one of the first family situation comedies to come over television airwaves. The New York Times reports that Gertrude Berg was born in October of 1899 in Manhattan. Period sources of the time tend to gloss over her childhood. However, Glenn D. Smith gives a detailed account of her life in his book, Something on My Own, Gertrude Berg and American Broadcasting, 1929-1956. Smith describes Berg, born Tilly Edelstein, as a naturally creative, ambitious, and dynamic young woman. She's described as writing and performing from a young age. In his analysis for early years, Smith writes, To be sure, the Goldbergs was Tilly's picture of the ideal Jewish family, a love letter of sorts to her grandparents and to the life they'd given her as a child. However, Smith also touches on a problematic relationship with her mother. Tilly's mother, Dinah, according to Smith, was just appalled by the Goldbergs and her daughter's attempt to broadcast the family's Jewish history. In retrospect, Dinah's longing to be more American is best understood when considering the different forms of discrimination to which many Jewish men and women were subjected to at this time. Berg met and married her husband, Louis, according to Smith, in 1918, and like so many of the stories we've heard before, it's really at this point where her story seems to truly take shape. While she began her foray into writing and performing at an early age, her professional drive takes shape when she started studying playwriting at Columbia. From this point, it was a quick jump to her radio breakout. According to Smith, the Goldbergs premiered in November 1929, and it was just weeks after the fateful stock market crash, which would eventually plunge the country into the depths of the Great Depression. According to the Radio Hall of Fame, the show titled The Rise of the Goldbergs initially ran as a weekly 15-minute program. However, by 1931, it became a daily serial. The show ran at various times and on various different networks, but it quickly established itself as a radio staple, staying on the air throughout the Great Depression and World War II before eventually jumping to television in the late 1940s. So what happened? <laughs> Jack Darlington, I'm, I'm thinking now that we have a new landlord. Maybe I should ask him to do me. What do you mean, do you? Is it decorate me, paint me, or the whole apartment? Don't ask, better. Why not? Why not? <laughs> huh? Because the answer will be no. How, how do you know we no? Because that's the extent of a landlord's vocabulary. No. The show was of the family sitcom Variety, which was and continues to be highly popular with audiences. However, where the Goldbergs really differed and broke ground in entertainment is that the show features and spotlights a Jewish family, a rarity in the rather waspy 1950s. Filmmaker Aviva Kemper is quoted in the promotion for her documentary, You Who Mrs. Goldberg. She brought the Jewish American family experience to mainstream audiences at a time that was the worst for Jews, both in terms of domestic anti-Semitism and what was happening in Europe. The series shows a working class family as opposed to the far more middle class depictions of family which tended to dominate the airwaves during this period. The Library of Congress describes the series. The family consisted of an amalgamation of relatives, all living under one roof, Father Jake, kids Rosalie and Sammy, and elderly Uncle David. Overseeing them all, however, was the show's benevolent matriarch Molly. 
Throughout the run of the show, Bert functioned as not only the star and creator, but she was also the primary writer and producer and even sometimes director. Interestingly, Bert was also the recipient of the Best Actress Emmy Award at the third presentation of the award ceremony in 1951. Her competition was fear seeing Berg beat Helen Hayes, Judith Anderson, Imogene Coca, and even Betty White. <clears throat> the Goldbergs hit troubled times in 1950 when Berg's co-star Philip Loeb was named in Red Channels as a purported communist. According to an article in The Atlantic entitled Remembering a Remarkable Jewish Mother, the show's sponsor General Foods demanded that Loeb be dropped because he'd become too controversial. They write that Berg didn't bow to pressure and the show went off the air. Berg fought hard for Loeb, but the actor later resigned before eventually committing suicide. The Goldbergs later returned with a new actor as patriarch, but it was never quite the same. As you know, in the case of the uh, mystery challenger, we dispense with all of the usual preliminaries and get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Faye Emerson. That was very extended applause. Are you someone uh, very much in the public eye? Rather. <laughs> uh, uh, have you appeared uh, on television before? Yes. Have you also appeared in other branches of the entertainment industry? A few, I would say, yes. Have you appeared on the silver screen? The what screen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Have you been in pictures? <laughs> in moving pictures? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, have you also been in the theater? Yes, I have. Uh, have you done a picture that would have played in, uh, let us say, on Broadway in the last year? Indeed, I have. Uh, now, you mustn't get into a lady's age. That would be very naughty. Uh, <laughs> do you have a... Uh, have you appeared regularly on television? On and off, yes. Uh, but I take it you don't... Disposition? Is it a comedy program? Well, it varies. <laughs> Are you the program's out-and-out -out star? Maybe John would have to answer that. Yes, I believe I am. You are then a comedian? Oh, occasionally. Uh, Who is uh, it, by the way? Is it Molly Goldberg, by any chance? Oh, you got to do the same Every Tuesday evening, as I dare say you will all remember now, on another network which shall go nameless, but it's called Dumont. What? I'm particularly <laughs> embarrassed, John, not to have done a little bit better on Molly Goldberg because I've just finished reading my father's series of articles on her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> would Miss Goldberg use, uh, would you use your, the accent you, we know now for just What do you want me to say, darling? <laughs> <laughs> Before she passed away in 1966, Gertrude Berg had blazed a trail for women writers and creators in the middle of the 20th century. Not only did she write for radio and television, Berg wrote plays and novels. She was a voracious writer and a smart creator, and hers is a story which should be remembered. Stay tuned for more here at Female Gaze Productions as we look at classic popular culture through a historical and feminist lens. My name is Kim. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at kpear624. And as always, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.